When I posted the build video of Perry White, the editing rig, I promised another to show the performance of the MSI 1070 Ti Duke on a Ryzen 1700. Well, after my testing, I decided that wasn't enough. So today, I'm going to show you those results, and then I'm going to try and get more out of the Duke by upgrading the thermal compound to this Master Gel Maker Nano from Cooler Master. Hey there. As promised, I have some performance results on the Duke for you some of which ended up being rather informative and even impressive. Uh, first, you should know that with the stock Wraith Spire cooler, I was only able to get all cores to 3.6 gigahertz on the Ryzen 1700 while maintaining reasonable temperatures under 75 C. Uh, this did, however, make a significant change, at least in benchmarks like Firestrike and Superposition. I was able to add 225 megahertz to the Duke's core clock speed and 250 megahertz to the VRAM speed. Now with that overclock, I'm running games like Overwatch at 4K Ultra 60fps, and more intense titles like Ghost Recon Wildlands get 60fps at 1440 very high settings. Uh, so here's some things for the numbers guys. noise. In order to maintain the high clock speeds near 2.1 gigahertz, the temps must be kept in check. In order to do that, I had to create a very aggressive fan curve. Unfortunately, when the fans ramp up to 100%, they're even audible while wearing my Corsair Void headset. So we'll see if we can improve on that by changing the thermal compound on the Duke to this Cooler Master Master Gel Maker with nanoparticles. Uh, rather than blah 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 about it, I'll just show you the results. So let's roll the tech point. So after 15 minutes of running the Time Spy graphics test in a loop, we're getting 74 degrees on the GPU, and it's bouncing between 2038 and 2060 something. However, in order to get those temps to produce those speeds, that fan is aggressive. Now, if that fan has to be aggressive, I'm sure you can hear it's got some volume. And we're gonna see if we can fix that a little bit by changing the thermal compound. So here we are, after thermal compound change. 
now reading 68 degrees down from the previous 74, still running the same aggressive fan curve. So I'm going to change that to the stock fan curve, and in a moment, we'll see what temperatures we get, and hopefully, maybe it'll be quieter. And now, with the stock fan curve, we're getting temperature readings very similar to where we were before the thermal compound change. The nicest thing about that is that that volume on those fans has dropped considerably. Now, before you start filling the comments with, you voided the warranty posts, I contacted MSI and got it in writing that they would only void the warranty if there were physical damage to the cart. So with all these results, I would go so far as to say the 1070 Ti Duke is a 4K plausible card. Not exactly a 4K solution for all games, but it will handle a pretty heavy graphics load. Uh, I would also go so far as to say that with a simple 15 minute project like changing the thermal compound is not only worth it, but if you plan on overclocking these cards, it's almost necessary. Uh, as always, go ahead and click that subscribe button and notification bell. And if you like this video, give it a like. And if you didn't, I'm sorry the other kids never picked you for kickball. I'm Meat Popsicle from the Prodigal PC, and I shall speak to you when I return.